everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh and I'm reviewing the expiration week for the options newsletter for the week of January 21st. This was the trades that expired that Friday. I usually do the weekly. So these are all the trades and there was a 100% win ratio. It was a really good week. We've had a great start to 2022. <coughs> and to be honest, the trades are just there. I mean, they've just been plopped into my lap, it feels like, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it's nice to have so much opportunity. We're capitalizing on it. You don't have to do all the trades. You can take whatever risk you like. So I'm using a, an average of a thousand dollar risk per trade risk. You could have made 30,695 this one week. Every trade worked. If you did them all, let's go through them. Again, this was expiration 121. <laughs> For those of you that now I appear on television, you can watch me on Fox News, Fox Business, and pretty much every channel. I try to tweet when I'm on TV. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can always call me at 929-3200-GAP, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So everything I do is based on my Golden Gap rating system. I write the gap in the morning, and then the newsletters, again, the options newsletter, that's where we're going over here. If you were a subscriber, you get the trades in live time, and then you take them. Targets are on the letter. But it's all based on my rating method. So I'm rating them. I'm rating them in the pre-market. Let's go over them. So there were 13 trades, 13 winners, zero losers, and zero break-even, 100% win ratio. Total risk, if they weren't all on the same time, but if you took them all, you would have needed 14,925 Beginner traded profits, 36.95. Return on investment, 203%. So just a really nice week. And again, it's about having more winners than losers. That's how you're successful in the market. That's how you can make money trading. So I try to focus. January 13th, 10.17, I called the expiration of 121, the Facebook 330s. So let's see, this one was called in the 13th, exit the 18th. Let's look at it. <laughs> this is pretty reasonable, I think, 380 for the Facebooks. So again, the average was about $1,000 I used for this. For beginner, three contracts, 1140. Whatever your risk is, it should be close to equal or similar, just so you know. That's how you can get consistent results. Sold at 12, profit 2460, return on investment 216%. Nice trade. I mean, again, you're looking to get in, get out, but you want momentum, you want it to move. Now, I'm going to show you the chart. This really doesn't look like much at all, but it was a perfect, 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 perfect entry. Here's where it was. Again, you got to get the direction right and options to be successful, but the timing, the timing of the entries is so important to him. And it's something that I'm very good at. I'm just great at entries. And, you know, again, this is why people are signing up for the newsletter. Here, boom, get the drop. And this was not even like some Megalodon drop, like here. This was just boom. That was it. It doesn't even look like much. And look, it was over 200%. It was a beautiful trade. It was a beautiful call. So that was a putt. So when you're doing a putt, it's dropping. The price is dropping, okay? Again, called the 330s here right at the strike. Then it dropped into it, through it, through the strike, okay? So that is a put. When we do calls, we're looking for it to go up, okay? Also did the Netflixes here, 520, same day, same time. The, actually there were four trades this day. This is the fourth one here, I numbered them. So I, sometimes I will stack them, stack them with the, with the strikes. So this was 1350, you could have done one, Rich 1350 sold at 24, you could have made 1,050. In and out, in the 13th, out the 18th, 78% return investment. Now, what I put over here was, because I wanted to show you, this actually went, just fell off a planet on the earnings. The earnings were the 20th, and so this didn't expire the 21st. If you stayed in this trade to the very last day, not that I think anyone should have, but if you did, you would have risked the profit, you would have risked the risk. So you would have lost, you would have gave back all the profit and lost thirteen fifty. In this case here, it would have paid off. And again, I'm not saying that people should ever do it. When, when you have, have a positive trade, 50% or more, it's important, important to book it when you don't, you don't know what's going to happen before the earnings. In this case, it worked in the earnings favor of the direction that I was looking at, which was down. If you held it at the close, this isn't even the high 
the high of the afternoon trade, this was the close, it was 125 in the very last day, 11,150. Again, sometimes I get this question, oh, are you always holding to the very last? No, that's impossible. I mean, it's just, you know, I do the best I can. The idea is to book money, and the idea is to have more winners and losers. I feel like we accomplished that, and I try my best with good exits, and sometimes we do have low the day exits inputs, and sometimes we do have high the day exits and calls, but it's not like my goal. My goal is to get the best gap, really. But like, here's what this did. Here's the chart. It was the 13th. Here. Take it up. So this went, boom. Again, take it over. So again, I knew it was going to drop into it. It dropped into the 520s. And again, I called a couple other ones we'll look at. But anyways, then, then this was here. So this was the 20th. The earnings came out that night, and then it tanked. It opened that day under 400. That was insane. Insane. So if you got out this last day here, I mean, it made your whole week. It made your whole month, really. I, I think some people did actually hold it through. Um, I didn't, but I think some people did. Um, I have to go back and look at my email, the Gap Options newsletter subscribers who did. But I'm showing you this here because I want you to see when I called the trade, what the stock did after it, and that the potential exists if you ever decide... Listen, Listen, I did, I did call four, four trades, trades in this. You, you could have held one, one actually. actually. You could have held one. There were different strikes. But, you know, you it's it's sort of like gambling when you hold into the earnings if you're up a good amount because you just don't know. This could have very well gone to 600. Then the whole profit would have been gone. Again, because it was the last day of the expiration. Now, the times that I hold to the last day of the expiration are, guess what? When I'm already down in the tree. <laughs> you know? So then I have nothing to lose, really. So the trade could go in my favor, in which case, again, this did. So I'm pointing out here that, you know, this was a ridiculous, ridiculous trade if you held it. But it was a good, solid trade if you took it and got out. And again, chunking it out is the process and is the goal. But we absolutely do not get out of everything at the high. That's not even realistic. And I don't know what people think when they ask that question because it's like, Honestly, that's next to impossible. While there are some times I feel like we have low the day exits and shorts in the day trading room, we had two in the last week, actually. When I went back and looked at them, I said, wow, we got out almost at the bottom. I sometimes can do that. And even in options two, sometimes I can do it near the high of the options chain where I'm watching them right on it, right on it, right on it, right on it. But you literally have to be like that to get it like that. And then sometimes something happens. And it keeps going anyway. So what are you going to do? This was one of those instances. You do the best you can. Your goal is to make money. That is your goal. To be profitable. To be as successful as you could be. Not to take crap shoots and pot shots. You know, that's what you go to Atlantic City for. <laughs> so then I did the 525s here. I called them at the same time. Stacked them. Similar, but was slightly more expensive. So if you had a beginner risk of 1,000, I'd say you couldn't do this trade. you got to keep it close to similar. You could have sold it right before the earnings at 27 on the 18th, or you could have held it through and you would have made 11,000. Close on the day of the last day was 128. So this one was a no for a person with a thousand risk. Same chart, same everything. Higher strike it was the 525s. That's why it was more. Also, I called at the 530s again. You can hold one, you can do whatever. This one you couldn't do either though. Too expensive. This is right before the 18th, before the earnings. And again, if you held it through, it was worth 135 at the close on the very last day. This is highly unusual though, people, but I'm showing you this for, for teaching purposes, for educational purposes, so you can see the possibility. And again, what a nice call I had in this here, really. I mean, it was just another good entry, another solid, solid entry. 535s was the first one, same thing, same time, a little bit earlier in the day. It was more, couldn't do this if you had a thousand risk, it would have doubled it, would have been like two trades in one, which is a no-no. This again, close of the last day, 135, 11,500. Pretty crazy, but this thing just tanked. Went more than 100 points through into the earnings and, um, and actually has not recovered since. And that was back, what is today, March 3rd. Yeah, that was more than a month ago. Has not recovered. Well, here, this was the first, the chart in from two days ago. So then let's look at the, the SPY. This was same day, 1015 to 471 SPY puts. 
You could have done it, got in, got the move, got out. Again, we're looking for the drop and a put. This was pretty reasonable. 340, three contracts, risk 1,020, sold at 24. Profit 6,180, return on investment 606%. It was an amazing trade. Let's take a look at it. Again, the 13th. So here we are. And here's the drop. Boom. Boom. And again, this is an exit here. Oops, where's the 20th? No, here. This is an exit the 20th, not the last day. It went further the last day. Again, this you wouldn't if you exited this here, this was not the high end options train. If you held it the last day, you made more. Completely insane. Again, the low in this day is you take it over like 436. This these were the 471s. Look. So, you know, again, one of the reasons why people are having so much success, the subscribers of the Gap Options newsletter, is the timing of these trades when I'm getting them out are super duper early. So we're getting in them really early. And that means you, ha you have flexibility. You could take four, get out of two, hold two. You can take four, hold them off. You can take four, quick, get out, do another one, do a lower strike, whatever. It gives you the flexibility when you have an amazing entry, you know, which again, this was as well. Got the nice flush here. Again, seems like forever ago, but this was the third week of January. But again, this one here, I want to point out, you could have held and made more, more money the last day. I don't think that's wise for people to do it because you, you're you up. So then the 388 puts in the queues, same day. 420, contract three, risk is 1280. Sold 24, again, the 20th, not the last day. You could have made $5,940 and a 471% return investment. So again, when you look on the return on investments of this trade, and I'll show you the chart in a minute, and this trade, which was 606, this is not even the high of the options chain. That's my whole point. I didn't, I didn't, don't think I even looked at what they were that Friday. We ended up doing other things. I think that day we did new stuff, but you get to a point where once you are out of a trade, you got to move off of it. But I just want to show you here. These are, these are incredible numbers, people. So really not much money management needed. Because you take it, you get the move, you get out. You're going to make money either way. That's how we had all winners here in this particular week and some just huge, 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 huge trades. And it just goes to prove the point that you don't have to risk a lot in order to make money. If you can risk 1200 bucks and make almost six grand in a week, that's fabulous. Fabulous. Okay. Because remember, I called it on the 13th. The 20th is about a week. So here's the cues. Again. Boom and drop. There it is, drop. Again, what happened the very last day, it continued. So this was the 388s. Where did it go the last day? 350. It's crazy. Crazy, but the, the 20th was here at 360. Look at that. It went 10 points. It looks like the last day. <laughs> I didn't go back and look what these were worth either in the close of that last day. I did for Netflix because it was such, that was such a monster move. I really, I want, I mean, I wanted to know. But, you know, in this, all of these cases here, you could have held the last day. Again, that's, it's risky to do that, especially in a volatile market like we're in right now. But it was working in our favor here, and we got it. So 460 spies I called in Friday, which was the 14th. I saw what was happening. Again, here it is, the 14th, which is Friday, into the following week. Same expiration, $3.60 for the puts. Three contracts you could have taken with 1,080 risk, sold at 12, and made 25.20. Return on investment, 233%. I always tell people, you know, if you're not comfortable holding overnight, then you can back your risk off or do less trades. Do less trades. Because again, when you're getting something in your direction, and again, here's the 14th. We're going to look at this particular day. It was here. This backed up. This backed up. This trade, when I called it here, at the time here, let me go back. It was 841. So I call this here in the pre-market. You take the trade into the open if you want to do it. But either way, it was a put. We rallied here. This trade didn't go positive until the next day you had to, which was Monday. So this was Friday. So you hold it over the weekend and stay in it negative if you stayed in it. But look how it paid. If you killed it, you missed it. If you killed it, you missed it. So people are better off letting the trades play out and backing off their risk or doing less trades. 
Holding overnight is sometimes a benefit of doing options, as I've said this many times before, many, many times before. And while everyone wants everything to go the second that I call it, that's not realistic in every trade. And you got to learn what you're doing here so you can understand to get the reap the benefits and the rewards. Then I also called the 374 puts again, same day in the queues. That was Friday again in the pre market. These are all around similar to the same price. 380, three contracts, 1140, sold 1150, profit 2310. Again, this was one that backed up too. I'll show you the chart. 203%. Here is the day. Again, called it, backed up, and drop, drop, drop. So again, this trade was negative going into the close of Friday. You were down in the trade if you didn't, wherever it was. But the point was you take the risk you can afford. So you can let the trade play out. I know there's some people that kill them when they go down the first day I call them. I know there's people that do, and then they say, oh crap, why did I do that? Someone called me the other day about that. And then he did better after we had the talk. So again, you have to kind of go with what we're doing here. Again, if you've done the class, you may understand better what I'm looking at here. If you haven't, you have to back off your risk so you can let the trades play out. In this case here, Goldman was a weird one. These banks, sometimes they work right as options and sometimes they don't. They've got to have big moves to pay. You know, I'll, I'll be happy with 40% in a bank one or 50, but this was one that got out of it the last day with money. That that's why it's only a profit of 1,500. Or no, that's the, that's the was, that was the advanced rate of profit. But I'll show you, this was 365. It was, it was, oh no, you couldn't do this trade. Yeah, you couldn't do this trade for beginner. But if you, if you had done it, as a um, advanced trader, if you had done it, it had a small profit. It had a small profit, but it wasn't like even, it wasn't even like 30 or 40%. It was just whatever. Here's the chart. It just, it was going in our favor, but it couldn't get the mojo. Couldn't get the mojo. Here it was. So here it was, and here's the drop. And again, the 21st is here. So again, it was the 365s down and here's the drop. Again, it was just one of these weird ones where it just didn't get enough juice in it to go. It worked though. I mean, it was not a it was not a loser. It was a positive trade. I forgot what this cost here though. You couldn't do it if you had a thousand dollar risk. So that one was off. Okay. Unless you wanted to, you know, up your risk to 1500, you could do that. You know, you could have done some of these ones, actually, if you want to use a $1,500 risk. I'm trying to come up with a number to show people just what's possible with lower risk so that they can uh, partic participate. You know, so many times people are like, well, I have to wait till this thing, that thing, that thing, the other. I've seen take, people take small accounts with $2,000 and build them up to five, ten. One guy build it up to 25 You know, again, it may take several weeks. It could take several months. But at least you're trading, you're active, you're building it. It's going to take you a lot longer to save 25 grand than it is to trade actively if you're doing it right and you're taking winning trades. This was the SPY 50, uh, 458 puts. Called this on the 18th. It was a tight one here, but it worked too. This was in the pre-market, 925. Cost was $4, three contracts, risk 1,200, sold at 950, profit 2,200, return and investment 138%. A nice trade. Let's take a look at the gap. So 118, 458, 118. Oh, this was the Monday, yeah. So this was the Friday we just talked about. Then we gapped down on the Monday. Take it over here, called the 458s a little bit under. Again, got the drop, boom, boom. But I call this pretty tight. In this case here as well, if you held it the last day, you made more money. Again, doesn't make sense to do that. Getting out here is beautiful, beautiful. Look where it dropped far, far through the strike, came down here, broke 450. Then I also called the 455s. I told you I will stack them. This was a lower one, so it was slightly um, less expensive. Four, you could have gotten four, $3, risk 1,200, sold at eight, profit 2,000, return on investment 167%. This was all that same gap on that Monday. Okay. So again, here's the day. Oh no, that was the that was Tuesday because that was the short week. That was Martin Luther King week. This was actually Tuesday. Yeah, so this was that was Friday. Then we had off 
the Monday, so it was a three-day weekend. That's right, I remember that now. It really worked in our favor. Don't remember why we gapped down there. Just, you know, I, I don't remember that. We also did the 450s. 1.30 in the afternoon, saw it was going. Same expiration, 121. These were dirt cheap. I mean, to call that so far away, and it went, it went, it went through it. I'm very good at reading price action and live time specifically. It's the benefit of trading with me. It's the benefit of signing up for all of these things. My classes and newsletters, all of it. Cost was two, five contracts, risk a thousand, sold 360, $800 profit, 80%. So this is over here into the day. Like the day is already going. And then I said, okay, this is going to get to 450. And then it goes boom. And it went down here almost to 445. But that was, you know, that was a really cheap price for to do a spy put like that. But again, I'm calling this when it's points and points and points away because I'm seeing it's going to go there. Uh, then, oh yeah, we just talked about this. Okay, so this was the 450. And then I called Amazon. 3100 was the the strike. And again, these are not cheap. So this was the put. Uh, you couldn't do this trade. You couldn't do it. So the cost was $21. Could have sold it for 72. It was a positive trade if you were able to take one for 2100, but you couldn't do it with your risk of a thousand. Let's look at the chart. This was another winner though, so I'm pointing out all the winners that every trade worked this week. But again, you couldn't do this. You couldn't participate in this trade because of the cost if you stick to your rules. And you must. You must. You you have to. You have to, no matter what. You're the one setting the rules. If you're risking ten thousand dollars a trade, you can't risk thirty. You got it. Stick to the rules, set the rules. You set the rules yourself. If you can't follow the rules you set yourself, I mean, you can't follow any rules at all. How do you expect to be successful? 118, let's find it. Here we go. This was the same day after the weekend. Close to your gap down, boom. Got the drop. Beautiful. Again, crazy, crazy, crazy. Look what it did the last day. You can't possibly hold this to the last day. Not with the cost of this and everything else, but again, this is was not a low of the day exit at, the, at a sale price of 72. Look where it went, 2,800. It's crazy. I didn't even look what that was. Usually if I take something and I get out of it, I'm done with it. I'm just done with it. I mentally cannot spend any more energy on a trade that I'm not in. I'm in already other stuff already by then anyways that I'm thinking about. You just can't. You take it, chunk it, get it out, book it out, take it, book it, get out. Do the next one. And every time you take a trade and you book the money, not only do you have the profit in your account again, then the next day you also have the money you used to take the trade in the first place to take another trade. That's the beauty of trading. You get the money back plus the profit when you exit it. So that's pretty crazy. So that was 300 points. Seriously, 300 points. This isn't a matter of days. So this was 118. One, two, three. Four. In four days, the stock went down 300 points. So crazy. Again, a really nice read. Then the diamonds, the 18th, that same day, the 18th, which was Tuesday. Again, Monday, the market was closed. One o'clock in the afternoon, the 350 puts. These were cheap. A dollar eighty-five, six contracts, risk 1,110, sold at 320, profit 810, 73% return on investment, in and out. Take it and book it. Again, this continued too. They all continue. They all continue. You could have made money in all these all even in the last day. But again, it's just your job is to take the train, be right about the direction, the timing, and get in for profit and get out. So this was here. The Tuesday. Here's the drop. Boom. <coughs> so this was 350. Yeah, so I called this way lower. I call this way lower here. Um, but anyways, here the day of the last day, I just want to see where it went. It went to like 341, I think, 342 or something. Yeah. So this was when I called to drop into it, into it like a cup. Then the Facebook 330 puts called right in the morning early. These were not cheap. One you could have done for $1,100, sold at 20, made 100 bucks. Again, 82% return investment, it's a good trade. So this was the 18th, this was before the earnings. Where's the 18th there? Oh, it's here. Here's the drop, boom. That 
that's why they were so expensive. Because I called the 330s. That's why. Yeah. I don't remember why I did call the 330s. Or why did I call the 330s? I can't remember. Interesting. Let's go back to the QQQs. The 372 puts, then I called on the 18th exit 120. Again, this was that Tuesday. The gap down after the three day weekend. So really these were tightly called because to be honest, I could have called them out for the following week. They, they all would have worked. Um, you could have held them a little bit longer, but you would have paid more for them. 375, three contracts, risk was 1125, sold at 950. Profit 1,725, return on investment 153%. So there again, you take it, get the drop. This was 372. Right here. Here's the drop and out. Here's the last day. Again, if you would have held it, came down here 350. This one here is 360. A beautiful, beautiful read of this market. I'm just reading this market so well this year. Gotta, gotta, gotta continue to do it. I mean, it's just about focus for me. Then I called the 370s that same day, a little bit after the open. Salt was continued. These were down into it. Three dollars. Four contracts risk 1,200. Sold at 750. 1,800 profit in and out. Again, 150% return in investment. This continued. Remember. You could have made more you held it the last day. Not that I think you could have, but it was a beautiful exit on Thursday. Thursday, which was here. And again, take it over. It's right around 360. So there were all in all 13 trades, 13 winners. You know, some you couldn't have do because of the price point. So, so you can't. So again, like I said, you build your account up. You would have had to risk an average of a thousand a trade. Some you were doubled up in some of the days, some you got out of, some you held. Again, these trades were called on different days, but all the same expiration date of the one week of results up until the expiration, the 21st. So from the Thursday to the Thursday, because again, I don't really think it makes sense to hold it the last day, but in many cases in these trades, you could have made more money. So beginner trader profits, 30,695. And again, some of the trades, you know, aren't in here that for you to do, unless you want to up your risk to 1500. I don't think it's, there's anything wrong with taking a $1,500 risk. And then you can do some of the ones that cost 16 or 17. That's fine. Um, again, you shouldn't be risking 1500 on average and then taking one that costs 3,900 or something or 39 bucks for one. You have to really think about where you're at with your cash. And again, as you see, it's a very active letter. So you want to be able to take, you have the benefit of actually doing the trades. You want to be able to make money. That's the whole point. So if you have questions, you can certainly reach out to me. You can certainly email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. If you want to sign up for the Gap Options newsletter, you can email me too. You can go to the website. It's www.thestockswoosh.com. Go to the website. And on there, I have a half annual subscription for $4,999 at six months and an annual subscription of 12 months, which is $69.99 for 12 month subscription. I do not have trials. There are no prerequisites and I don't have a monthly or quarterly service. It's one of these things where if you have questions, you can pick up a phone and you can call me. Email me as well, melissa at thestockswish.com. Have a great day, everyone. So if you're interested in learning my method, you can sign up for the Golden Gap course. This is a class that I typically do once a month. You can email me for upcoming dates. The March class is March 26 and 27, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Cost of the class is $69.99. Again, you could be anywhere in the world and take it. It is a weekend class. The class is always held on the weekend. If you're interested in signing up, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com to register. If you would like to sign up just for the newsletter subscription, these newsletters I've been reviewing in this video, there's a one year subscription option and a six month option. I just added the six month option this year. I do not have monthly or quarterly and I'm not gonna be doing that. This is good enough. I'm giving people two options and six months is a long time. 12 months is a huge amount of time. As you can see from this week here, it's an active letter. You may not even wanna do all the trades. So you jump in, you sign up, you get started, you get going. 
and then you can take your time you can do one trade a day whatever works for you again it's based on your experience and the size of your account again trades are emailed to you it's $49.99 for six months and $69.99 for 12 months so find a way to make it work for you if you want to sign up and jump in so that you don't miss any more opportunities it has been a great start to 2022 and if you'd like to sign up if you have questions feel free to email me i will get back to you and if you have any other information you'd like to share as far as your experience with trading options if you're new if you have been trading for a while you can detail that to me in an email as well again everything i do is based on my golden gap rating system so I've used the strategy I created in a way to, to trade options because again, you get the overnight moves. We've gotten huge moves overnight. I like doing day trades and options. I like doing both. But if you just want to do options, this newsletter is a thing that you'd want to join. There are people that are working full time and doing these options at their jobs or while they're doing their jobs. It's an amazing thing. I said this on a previous video. There's a truck driver that signed up. He is literally <laughs> delivering packages and trading in the truck. He's doing it and he's been doing very well. He made 35 grand in two weeks. Now that wasn't even in January. That was in February since he, since he signed up. So, you know, find a way to make it work for your schedule if you can do it. And if you can't trade every day, then you do it the days you can. You do it the days that you can. Again, feel free to email me if you want to discuss your experience. I will get back to you. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Have a great day, everyone.